We'll hear from candidates for state and county offices, each of them committed to working hard for us. Thank you all for joining us. We are truly fortunate to live in this great democracy where all of us have the right to vote for the candidates of our choice. Please listen to the candidates tonight, learn everything you can about all who are running for office this year, and exercise your precious right to vote on November 4. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce our host, Steve Rand. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to our forum this evening. Um, I'm pleased to be asked to do this. Um, not professional, but I'm going to do my best. Um, so it's, it's very simple, actually. What we're going to do is we're going to hear from the various candidates. Uh, we're going to let them take a about a three-minute time period to introduce themselves, to tell us about important things that they feel the voters should know in order to make decisions, and then we're going to move right along to the next person, same thing. And after we've gone through the, the folks on this particular panel, then we'll let them come back for a minute and, ex and uh, rebut, if there is any rebuttal, or to further explain. But they'll have a minute to do, to do that. <coughs> uh, so, um, the first group that we have tonight are folks running for office for the county, uh, for the county, in the county government, in Grafton County government. So, uh, they are Alan Monica on my, on my left here. Alan is running for county commissioner as an independent, Martha Richards running for county commissioner, Kelly Monahan, who is running for uh, Register of Deeds, and Paul Samard, who is also running for Register of Deeds. Yep. No, you're running for county commission, I'm district sorry, three. County commissioner, <laughs> see? So you have three folks here who are county commissioners. I let them sit wherever they wanted to, because they wanted order, but there is the, but I'm trying to shake them up a little. Good evening. My name is Alan Monica, and I'm an independent candidate for county commissioner in Grafton County. I have extensive ties in New Hampshire. I grew up in Grafton County. I attended public schools in Grafton County, and I completed my undergraduate education at the University of New Hampshire. And I, I left uh, the state to pursue career opportunities, and I uh, relocated to Massachusetts. I was there for several years, and then I re relocated to Florida. And while in Florida, I completed my master's in social work while working full time. And I, a few, few, few years later, I completed my law degree again while working full time at the University of Miami. Uh, I have extensive experience working in government. I work for poverty programs. I've also uh, set up programs for the mentally ill. And one of the programs I directed received a uh, NACO award. Um, I've been a public servant for, for many years, and I, I've appreciated my, my, my role as a public servant. I also started a law practice while I was in Florida, and uh, I work primarily in my law practice with uh, middle class, and uh, I, was, I was able to serve people at a reduced fee at times and also did many cases for free. As your county commissioner, one of the things that I would like to do is, is bring jobs here to our to our our county uh, I think we have a shortage of jobs I think our our, our, our economy in, in some respects has been been stagnant for a while I would like to work with Enterprise Center in uh, Plymouth to not only uh, bring new jobs but also try to recruit companies to come to New Hampshire because we have a great place to live here um, I also would like to make sure that our elderly population has has the things that they need and that they receive the home health care that will enable them to remain in their homes for as long as possible. Uh, we have a very good nursing home with the county, but our nursing home is pretty much filled with uh, filled, filled to capacity. So we need to develop things for our for elderly people. Um, I'm an independent candidate. I have no agenda. I have no party platform. Um, I'm here to work for the people of Grafton County. I believe in an efficient government, I believe in keeping the taxes low, and I believe in service to the people, and I'll be very appreciative of your vote, and I will work for the people in Grafton County in an honest and diligent manner. Thank you very much. All right, and Martha, please. 
Good evening, everyone. I'm Martha Richards, your current county commissioner, and I hope to keep it that way. This is my fourth term, and I have thoroughly enjoyed my work up at the county, and as my saying goes, keep proven leadership, because I've done some special things, I think, for the county, and one of the ones I'm especially proud of is getting the wood chip biomass plant built and it was all investigated through a volunteer citizen committee. And just in this past year alone, we have saved $151,000 for you, the taxpayers, in propane and oil costs. So we've had a lot of energy savings up there and have been unique with that. Plus the geothermal system at our Department of Corrections is doing very well. I also sponsored the second Open Barn Day this year, and it was in memory of our dear late Ray Burton, who loved the county farm and was very supportive of it. But we wanted to continue pointing out the accomplishments of the county farm, which for many of you, there's 10 counties in New Hampshire. We are the only remaining dairy county farm in the state and very proud of it. We milk about 75 cows. The price of milk is high right now, so we're doing well with it. We have a vegetable stand that our inmates help run, and we bring in about $60,000 there. And through the vegetable stand this summer, we've already given out about six and a half tons of potatoes to many nonprofit service agencies. So we're proud of that. Plus having the inmates go around delivering these vegetables is a wonderful community service for them. I know that our county is very well run, and I enjoy working with Mike Cryans and Linda Lauer. It's a very nonpartisan job, and that makes it pleasant for all of us. We just try to do our best for the county. Also, we recently started an alternative sentencing department, which is now an umbrella over the Juvenile Restorative Justice Program, the Mental Health Court, and our Drug Court. And we have a new director as of two weeks ago. And we're very proud of that. We're the second county in New Hampshire to have this particular department. And it certainly is more economical and effective to have these people treated in these courts rather than incarcerated. Uh, I'm still very opposed to the Northern Pass Project and Industrial Wind Projects, and I attend a lot of these meetings. Commissioners do not have a vote on any of the permits, but I think it's important that we stand behind our citizens who are really very opposed to this, all 180 miles of it. We want it buried the whole way, and then New Hampshire gets these revenues from that project. We're very proud, too, of our social services budget, as Alan mentions. We, too, like to support our senior citizens and our youth at risk with these programs, and it's important to keep them in their homes and keep these kids out of trouble uh, through these programs and our money. So you can tell I'm very enthused about what I do. I think I'm effective at this, and I would appreciate your vote. And thank you. So I think we will we'll skip to Paul Samard uh, to keep the, the commissioner Second. group together. I'm sorry, no, no, it doesn't it's offend you, Kelly. So uh, and we'll keep the commissioners together, and then we have uh, Bill uh, Bill Sharp. Is it Bill? Do you, mm -hmm. Would you like to Would you like to join the crew? Be glad to because go. you are actually uh, one of our county candidates. Am I correct? And <clears throat> so uh, there we go. Why don't I take that? We don't allow press commercial, commercial messages. Just, just let me have that for a second. We're just going to put that right over here. Where people can see it? Well, they'll see it. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. So, uh, please, uh, Paul, go ahead. Good afternoon. My name is Paul Simard. I come from Bristol, New Hampshire. I'm running for the County Commission, District 3, 17 towns. Uh, my background is... Uh, Back in 1972, I served in the House. I chaired a uh, joint subcommittee that uh, worked on collective bargaining laws. The laws that currently affect collective bargaining in the state came out of my subcommittee, and I'm kind of proud of that. Served another term just recently um, and uh, sat on the Finance Committee, sat on Health and Human Services. Uh, we had a tough year. We were working with an $800 million deficit, and uh, we came out of that, and I'm proud of what we accomplished. Right now, I'm looking at uh, Grafton County, and uh, in 2010, our real revenues were $13 million. Our 2015 budget projects revenues to be $14 million. It's so actually when you when you look at the actual numbers, it's about five hundred thousand dollars increase over two thousand ten. Uh, in two 
2010, we raised $17 million from taxes. In the 2015 budget, we're looking at $21 million to be raised from taxation. So our revenues went up by 500000 and our taxes went up or are going to go up by $4 million. So you can see from that, we can no longer afford to spend the way we're spending. What I recommend is that we look to the future. We look to our needs. We have an aging county. We need to prepare for that, and we need to start doing that now. We need to start a capital improvement program, and we need to focus our resources in the areas that we're really going to need those resources. But I want to plan for the future now, and I want to implement those plans, and that's why I'm running for county commission. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Paul. <clears throat> Thank you, Paul. So we're going to switch now to, uh, to the uh, Register of Deeds candidates, and Kelly, would you, would you do, please? Certainly. Do you want to hit? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll let Kelly, and then I'll... Uh, I'll have thank you, Steve. Uh, first, <clears throat> I would like to say thank you very much to all here at Pemmy Baker TV and the Plymouth Area Democrats for all the work that goes into putting this forum to together. I'd like to thank the viewers for caring enough about local government to tune in to watch. My name is Kelly Monahan, and I've served as the Grafton County Register of Deeds now for two terms. I've lived in Orford for almost 17 years, raising three fine sons who are now all off attending college. I'm very committed to transparent government and the sharing of information with our citizens. Our new county website at www.co.grafton.nh.us has a wealth of information, <coughs> budgets, annual reports, meeting, meeting minutes. Uh, it's well worth a look. Also, my website, kellymonahan.com, K-E-L-L-E-Y-M-O-N-A-H-A-N.com, is full of information about me and my service to the county. I'm currently the secretary of the county joint loss committee, which examines all risk to lower our liability insurance rates, a member of the Joint Lots Inspection Team, a member of the Benefits and Compensation Committee, which spent two years cleaning up some outdated policy and loose ends, resulting in the publication of our new employee manual. I am the member of the Legislative Committee of the New Hampshire Register of Deeds Association, with our most recent accomplishment being a culmination of two years of work, producing HB 1122, <coughs> which was signed into law in June by our governor, this law giving New Hampshire a first-in-the-nation status, um, charging anyone recording a false document with the NH registries with a Class B felony. I was recently appointed secretary of our New Hampshire uh, RD affiliate. I've been an active voice in the national policy and was selected to a four-person panel to speak to a national gathering of over 200 registered of deeds on the subject of MERS, Mortgage Electronic Registration System. In Bristol this past Tuesday at a County Commissioner on the Road meeting at the new Minot Sleeper Library, I announced a library outreach program that I've been working on for over a year and a half. This program will provide free access to our database from the public libraries of Grafton County. In preparing for this evening, I was reviewing past budgets and would like to note that the four budgets produced by Mr. Sharp, in comparison to the four budgets that I have now produced, uh, the differences were distinct. Uh, in comparing the highest and lowest budgets, our two highest budgets, I uh, came in uh, $45,000 less than Mr. Sharp's. And in comparing our two lowest budgets, I came in almost $100,000 lower than Mr. Sharp's. In closing, I would like to state that I love this job. It's so gratifying to assist our citizens in locating documents that are pertinent to the financial health and well-being. The, gene the genealogy aspect of our database is incredible, and we see somebody almost weekly uh, researching genealogy. Um, and I hope the people of Grafton County will recognize my passion for this job and return me for my third term. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. I'm going to switch over here to the other side so the camera can see Mr. Sharp better. Uh, Bill Sharp is, is a candidate for the uh, Register of Deeds as well. Would you like to speak? You have three minutes. Oh, thank you very okay. much. You know, my name's Bill Sharp, and I'm a real person. I was born up the street here. I grew up in Woodstock, not too many miles from here, and that's where I got my first red drum. And uh, I lived in Canaan, um, growing up, living on the lake. My dad was a Methodist minister, and that's 
where I learned the difference between right and wrong, including the instructions from my mother. And that's very important to have as a public official. I do not smoke. I do not drink unless it's a hot day on a long parade. And then it would be a cold, uh, a cold Coors. I, I, I do not use drugs. I do not um, need to have a bong every day in order for myself to feel good. And I love the work that I did as the Register of Deeds um, the f four years previous to Kelly's term. When I entered that office, the records for the deeds were kept on a card no bigger than this. It was the same kind of a card that Harold Eggleston used down at the Canaan Center um, General Store. And they, he would write on there how much you owed or how much you paid and scratch out the old number and put the new number. And within two days when I took office, I said, what is this over here? What does that do? How much does this cost? Why are we doing that? Can we do without this? And then I ran across the card file. And I said, how much money's in there anyway? And they said, $27,000. It was Brenda that had it all figured out. She's got everything figured out. That staff was great. I'm telling you straight. And so I took the cards up to the commissioners and I said, hey, guess what? I got $20, $27,000 that's unaudited, off the books, and n ne never really accounted for. And Ray Burton says, I never want to see those cards again. So within a week, a George Morris had a system set up so that we could just push a button and all of the statements would come out. We would know how much we owed, how much owed us. And I turned to Kelly and I says, um, to Beth, and I says, Beth, how are we going to handle this, this money? We owe all this money. And she says, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll, we'll pay out 15 20 40 dollars Time's up. a week. And I straightened out the, uh, I straightened out the system. Okay. <clears throat> so just for your information, you'll have one minute to uh, rebut as well when we're done. I'm sorry to cut you off, but okay. So uh, now we're going to start uh, back again and ask folks to uh, to ex either expand on what they said or to uh, or to rebut something that they heard. Uh, and we'll start again with Alan, please. Well, again, I think the key to our future success in Grafton County is uh, we, we have to improve the economy. We have to get jobs in this area. We have to get people good paying jobs. I think a lot of the people here are hurting. And I think as a county commissioner, you have a responsibility to try to attract jobs and, and companies here in, into New Hampshire. I also like to uh, see if we can expand the university here. I'd like to have a technology center here. I'd like to have uh, a school of uh, medical health here, uh, particularly nursing. Um, I think that's the key. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm not a career politician. I, I, I ran because I, I want to make a difference, and I think I can. I think I have the experience in government and particularly the credentials to, to look at programs and to see if they're effective for the community. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Martha? Yes, um, just to maybe clarify some issues. Uh, PSU does have a nursing department here, and as commissioners, I don't feel it is our responsibility to actually go seeking jobs for our citizen that, citizens. That really isn't within our purview, but we do work with the Grafton County Economic Development Council through our wonderful executive director, Mark Scarano, who was instrumental in getting this enterprise center here in town and with a great partnership with Plymouth State University. So yes, we certainly are concerned about jobs and keeping our young people in the region, so it's a partnership, but that is not our main job as commissioners. 
I also wanted to mention the GED program, which is now called HiSET, at our Department of Corrections. We have the highest number of high school graduates in the county jail of any county in the state, and because of that, the recidivism amongst that particular group is essentially non-existent. We're very proud of that, and there's even a National Honor Society within the jail when these kids graduate, complete with cap and gown and music and cake. And for some of these kids who were just kicked out in high school, this is a very special ceremony. So we're very proud of this higher education program for them. And on a personal thank note, okay, thank you all, but I do <laughs> hope I'll get your vote of support. Okay, and then we'll go to Paul and try to keep the commissioner group together. <laughs> go ahead, Paul. Thank you, Steve. Uh, one thing, you know, with jobs, one of the things that's hampering our growth here in New Hampshire are the electric rates. We pay the fourth highest electric rates in the country. We have public service trying to force Northern Pass down through our beautiful scenery. And, you know, our, our mountains are what generate our tourist dollars and keep our economy afloat. I can't let that happen. I sat on the 361 commission with uh, Senator Forrester, and we sat there. The front row was taken up by lawyers from these electric groups, and we fought them. We can put... Northern Pass, underground. The estimate for overhead is $1.2 million. The estimate for underground is $2.3 million, and we had that estimate presented to the 361 Commission. That can be done. Wind turbines around Newfound Lake are going to ruin our scenic beauty. We don't need them. We in New Hampshire produce more energy than we use. We don't need it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so now, uh, Kelly, you are up now, and then after yes. you, Bill. I think in my opening remarks, I've been very clear about what I've accomplished in four years, and I hope to continue. Um, I have a question for Mr. Sharp, and that is, um, why would a voter encourage you to take the office, vote for you rather than me, after what I've the four years that I've put in? And if you want to answer that, that in your one minute or that not, that will have to be a question. A, um, an open so, question. Mm -hmm, he could fine. answer when it's his turn. Okay. Are you all yep, set? I'm all set. Okay. Mr. Sharp. Well, it's it's wonderful to have that kind of a question, you know, because it leaves me open in it to say that when I left the office, there was a hundred and twenty thousand dollars in the equipment account, and what had ha been happening before is they were robbing that account in order to puck up the budget at the end. And there's $120,000. I really want to ask Kelly a question. How much is in that account now? Uh, because when I came in, they were robbing the, they were robbing the account in order to help balance, balance the budget. The other thing that happened when I went, on, went, went into office is that we went online. We saved, uh, I saved the county $878,000 uh, in my budgeting process, which is a zero-based budgeting process, and then also by going online, we saved the taxpayers between four Time. and five million dollars. For that, Time. they should be thankful. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you all. Um, our county is in good hands and will continue to be in good hands. Uh, good luck to all of you in your races. And uh, we hope you come back and visit Plymouth often and uh, keep us in the, in the top of your minds um, as the premier uh, Grafton County town. <laughs> <laughs> Position in our state represent in our, in our state legislature as uh, representative to the town of Plymouth Holderness and Hebron. So from left to right, we have Travis Bennett, we have Suzanne Smith, Mary Cooney, and Homer Ahern. Uh, so the format is <coughs> uh, they each have three minutes to uh, to discuss issues you may want the voters to hear, uh, positions you may have, and then. Uh, uh, everyone will go through that process, and then we'll have a minute uh, of follow-up for you each to either rebut or to further explain what, you're, what you've said. My name is Travis Bennett. I'm running for state representative, as Steve pointed out. So there are a lot of things that are driving me to seek election for a state representative. 
Um, there are several things I'm, I try to accomplish as a state legislator. Uh, Sid Lovett has, of course, been a big force for the preservation and conservation of the environment uh, in the Lakes region. Uh, since I'm seeking to fill his seat, of course, uh, and in kindred spirit, I hope to also be an ardent advocate for the protection of New Hampshire's lakes, mountains, and forests. Wind farms and the, protection, er, and the Northern Pass are, of course, two projects adversely affecting the environment in this area, which are also receiving intense opposition. Although both energy projects purport to be environmentally sound, they clearly are not, and are also detrimentally affecting property values. The dams put in place by Hydroelectric, uh, or Hydro-Quebec rather, have negatively impacted parts of Canada's river, river ecosystem and property values along the projected routes uh, have already dropped significantly. For these reasons, I'm adamantly uh, against Northern Pass and the wind farm projects. As a state legislator, I would certainly work to pursue sustainable and clean energy options, but not in such a way as to neg negatively affect the, uh, the people living in the areas where they're being implemented. Engaging and cooperating with young people in opposition to these environmentally damaging energy projects, and for the purpose of encouraging new or a new generation of environmentally conscious and civically engaged people, is also a key point of my candidacy. Clearly, as a young person seeking elected office, I'm hoping to demonstrate to young, young and old people alike that young people can have an active and positive role in politics and government. In the State House, I would seek to leverage my youthfulness and enthusiasm for the purpose of bringing legislators together across party lines. New Hampshire state government must function in a cooperative way to ensure that the proper social framework and services that will enable the success of our state's children and younger generations. By tapping into the independent spirit so prevalent throughout our state and using that in conjunction with youth, youthful calls for cooperation or, and responsibility, I believe I can be a very effective voice in the New Hampshire State House. In addition to environmental protection, one of the primary things I would use my voice in the State House for would be to work to find ways to draw more businesses to the, to the state and pr promote sustainable economic growth. In order to attract and retain young people and young families in New Hampshire, I will work to ensure that there are well-paying and desirable jobs and ideal business conditions. By providing the economic incentive and envi environment for young people and families to succeed, New Hampshire can grow economically and continue to be a wonderful state to live in. As a lifelong New Hampshire resident, I look forward to hopefully for serving in our state's government as a representative for the people of Plymouth, Holderness, and Hebron. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. Uh, now, Suzanne Smith, please. Thank you. Your three minutes. I am Suzanne Smith. I live in Hebron and I represent the towns of Plymouth, Hebron, and Holderness. I'm finishing my sixth year in the New Hampshire Legislature. I serve on the Resources, Recreation, and Development Committee, a committee that works for issues and across party lines to get things done, whether we're debating the eradication of milfoil or state park funding. Energy. What it is, where it comes from, and how it's transported through our state are very important issues. We must have strict criteria for the siting of all energy projects, whether wind, northern pass, or natural gas pipelines. We must bury northern pass. The ridge lines which abut Mount Cardigan and flank Newfound Lake are not appropriate for further industrial wind development. Our top priorities should be making our homes and our businesses more energy efficient and implementing and supporting local sustainable energy solutions such as rooftop solar. For all the money trying, spent trying to push giant industrial projects on the area, every home in northern New Hampshire could be buttoned up so that less energy is needed. There are no silver bullets to solve New England's high energy costs. Building new infrastructure will take years, but by improving energy efficiency, we can lower our electric costs right now. When it comes to the health of our state, prevention is the best medicine. When more people have health care coverage, fewer people will use emergency rooms as their primary care doctors, and our jails will not overflow with people who actually need behavioral health and substance abuse counseling and treatment. Prevention works and costs our state less than the alternative. Since implementation of the New Hampshire Health Protection Program in August, which was voted for on a strong bipartisan vote, over 19,000 low-income people previously ineligible for Medicaid have signed up for health care. This number is well above what was estimated for such a short period of time. Further proof that the people of New Hampshire want and need health care security. This program is 100% funded with federal money, money that comes from our income tax that we pay to the federal government. I support public education, kindergarten, high school, and, all, and higher education 
all high school students should have the opportunity to further their education, whether at a local technical college, a community college, or the university system. Many companies in New Hampshire hire out-of-state employees because they can't find qualified workers here. That's unconscionable, and I will continue to work to ex for access to public education and will fight any cuts. Finally, regardless of income, religious, ethnicity, social standing, or sexual preference, all the people of New Hampshire deserve to be treated fairly and with respect. I will work to keep civility in state government and fight for these issues. I ask for your vote, and I thank you for the trust you've shown in me. Thank you, Suzanne. And Mary Cooney is next. Thank you. Um, I can start right off by saying I agree with everything Travis and Suzanne said, <laughs> and I'd like to um, say that I have enjoyed serving you for 14 years, and I was elected in 2000. It's been an incredible educational experience that I would recommend to anyone who is interested in the political process. It can be very frustrating, but rewarding experience. My last four years has been on the Ways and Means Committee. This committee evaluates all bills which raise revenue or has an effect on revenue. The first year is spent estimating revenue for the next two years in concert with the Finance Committee, which will use those figures to craft a budget. I will be giving you my overall view of New Hampshire rather than specific stands on issues. I feel there is a lack of vision in New Hampshire. Ever since I was first elected, New Hampshire has struggled to meet the basic needs of the state, education, Medicaid, mental health, services for children and adults in need, and departments which control essential state services. The search for new revenue in the face of lawsuits has been limited to the advocacy of gambling. We are always looking for a free lunch. The extensive legislative research over the last decade has only solidified my opinion that gambling is very wrong for New Hampshire in many ways and would suck the life out of surrounding businesses and incomes for those who can least afford to lose it. It is a subject which would take hours to discuss. New Hampshire is 50th in the nation for support for higher education. Our tuitions are among the highest in the nation. David Wessel, an economist with the Brookings Institution and formerly a columnist with the Wall Street Journal, said recently, that the two building blocks for economic growth are education and infrastructure, and government should be investing in both. Government does not create jobs, but creates the ability for businesses to create jobs. New Hampshire has been living on the edge in crafting a budget for the past decade. We have a structural deficit. Our revenues do not keep up with our obligations. We have experienced lawsuits for many years because we as a state have not had the revenue needed to fund essential programs such as mental health and children in need of services or reimbursement of hospital costs for Medicaid services. We have always depended on one-time fixes and windfall revenues. It is time we face the fact that we need another source of revenue. We are one of the richest states per capita in the nation. Our burden falls on the payers of the property tax. We are the most dependent state on property taxes. This puts the heaviest burden on lower income families. Alaska is the only state with neither an income nor sales tax, and New Hampshire does not have Alaska's oil wealth. I would like to see a New Hampshire that is willing to invest in infrastructure and education and in its tourism strength, its historic places and parks. Government is not about cutting the budget. It's about providing services that citizens right. cannot provide for themselves. Thank you, Mary. Uh, I'm going to flip to the other side here for a better view of Omer. <coughs> Omer, you, uh, your, your time is up. It's coming. There you are. Okay, thank you. Good evening. My name is Omer Ahern, Jr., and I live here in Plymouth, New Hampshire. And I ask for your vote. By profession, I am an attorney for 35 years here in the state of New Hampshire and practicing family law, business law, and real estate and probate and estate planning. And one of the things that I've noticed as uh, representing many small businesses here in New Hampshire over the last 35 years is that New Hampshire is creating more and more burdensome rules and regulations that prevent our businesses here in New Hampshire from having a, a business climate that allows them to expand, in some cases even start a business here in New Hampshire, and hire employees. So that's one of the things that I would be doing as a state representative uh, and this would be my second time around as a state rep. I served the people 
down in Belknap County back in 2003 and 2004 as a state rep serving on the Environment and the Agriculture Committee. It's, that's a love that I have, a love for the environment. Uh, so I would be working uh, in the legislature with those who want to reduce government rules and regulations, reduce government spending, and reduce the tax burden on the people here in New Hampshire. As a uh, certified tree farmer, uh, I'm the fourth generation Ahern to be farming the land here in Plymouth. I was born in Plymouth, and I'm still farming on a tree farm, uh, land that's been in the Ahern family since 1897. My wife Susan and I have four children. Okay, I, I, I can't see. My, my eyesight is going. I can't see. So um, I uh, am also against the Northern Pass. We need to bury the lines in state-owned rights-of-way so that the income from the uh, right-of-way transmission will be coming to the people of the state of New Hampshire. And my service to the community here, I've been involved with the Friends of the PEMI, the Livermore Falls chapter, and I'm also uh, a member of the Zoning Board of Adjustment. And with all of these uh, uh, services, all of the um, volunteering that I've done for the town of Plymouth and my state of New Hampshire with the Farm Bureau, with Rotary, with the Grange, and with my church, I believe that I would bring a very vast amount of knowledge and experience to the position of state representative for this uh, area of Hebron, Holderness, and Plymouth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Omer. So now on our second round, we are... Each, each candidate will have a, a one-minute opportunity uh, to rebut or to expand. Please go ahead, Travis. Yeah, I'd just like to agree with uh, both Suzanne and Mary as well. I think um, definitely government is there to provide a social framework, not necessarily just you know to be as small and, and less you know, intrusive as possible. So I think in that light, too, I didn't really talk too much about uh, university or education spending, but I think definitely um, we need to broaden um, access to higher education and just ensure that all um, you know, families have decent access to quality education at lower level and higher level. And um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> I just wanted to add uh, one of the issues with business taxes is that the reason our business tax environment is a, is a high tax burden the wor even worse than having high business taxes for businesses is inconsistency. And in New Hampshire, we quite often will change every two years such huge amounts and that the Business and Industry Association would prefer things were just stable right where they are. And we increase the business and uh, business research tax credit this year, which is going to help businesses a lot. I also wanted to add some of the things I do besides being in the legislature, which is I'm on the Conservation Commission in Hebron. I've worked with Omer at the Friends of the PEMI with uh, the Livermore Falls Project, and I'm a trustee at PEMI Baker Community Health and enjoy my work there, too. And I probably do a million other things, but can't remember them all. <laughs> Thanks. Mary Cooney, please. Hi. I just, in addition, I could say that I support a rise in the uh, raising of the minimum wage, which might be an issue in this upcoming legislature. And as a personal um, thing that I am proud of is to have, have instrumentally gotten the county, since we're all delegates to the county government, to get them to uh, institute a, a countywide program for restorative justice for juveniles. And this keeps them out of jails in their initial rush with the law and restores their faith in human nature and and learns that you know people do care about them and I'm very proud of that and um, and one thing about taxes you can't reduce reduce the business taxes which I know Republicans have tried very hard to do but you can't do that if you look at Kansas you reduce that and then all of a sudden you've lost your revenue and we have so few ways of um, sources of revenue and when people say, you know, reduce the tax burden, well, the tax burden for most people is their property tax. And the state keeps Time. pushing more and more on to the property tax. Thank you, Mary. Homer? Two other things I would like to mention uh, is I have, my youngest son is still in college. All four of my children attended uh, New Hampshire uh, institutions of higher learning. And one of the things that I think we need to do is uh, work out a way so that there is a less of a financial burden on our young people attending our state 
uh, institutions of higher learning so that when they graduate, they will have less of a debt to wor uh, worry about and doing more so that they can stay here in the state of New Hampshire. All three of my older children are employed here in New Hampshire. One is a prosecuting attorney and police officer. One is an RN. And our third child is a fifth grade school teacher down in Concord. The last thing that I want to talk about is campaign finance reform. We do need to have campaign finance reform. For example, you had a uh, uh, union here in New Hampshire donate $25,000 to the governor uh, with regard to the Northern Pass project. The governor should be against the Northern Pass, and yet she's waffling. Um, and pr thank you very much. Thank you, Omar, and thank you, panel. Uh, good luck in your, um, in your upcoming election uh, for Grafton District 8. <laughs> Eric, could you move over just a yes, just a touch? Uh, that way, uh, everybody will be safely behind the table. Not that it matters, but yeah, perfect. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> that. Okay, very good. All obedient future public servants. <clears throat> uh, all right. So now, what we have uh, uh, for you is. Um, is, is candidates for two different districts in, the, in Grafton County uh, running for a representative to, uh, to the general court. Uh, Jim Aguiar, who is the fellow on the left without the name bag, Tet badge, uh, and, and, Eric, and Eric Johnson are running for the same seat. Am I right, John? Correct. That's yeah. correct. So, um, and they are both uh, from Campton, uh, that is District 7. Uh, Chuck Townsend is running for um, District 11 in Dorchester, Wentworth. Am I right? That's right. Yeah, see, it's not so complicated. <clears throat> uh, and uh, so what I'd like to do is have each of you take three minutes to uh, talk to uh, the voters about your your uh, your your issues, your uh, your passion, and uh, what you what you think they should know about your candidacy, and each of you in turn will have a have an opportunity to do that three minutes, and then we'll come back around for another one minute rebuttal slash uh, expansion on your on your ideas. So, Jim, would you please lead off? Certainly. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all the folks that uh, are behind the cameras and working here tonight. I know this is all a volunteer basis and I uh, greatly uh, appreciate your willingness to uh, invest your time in, in this uh, venture. Again, my name is Jim Aguiar. I first came to uh, Plymouth, uh, the Plymouth area in <clears throat> 1974 and I had the opportunity to teach and coach at Plymouth State, which was then of course Plymouth State College. Um, and I've enjoyed that uh, connection um, ever since. The, it's been an amazing transformation in this uh, campus. And, and Plymouth State brings an incredible amount of excitement and vitality to this area. So I've always enjoyed my uh, connection with Plymouth State. I um, was fortunate enough to have my children uh, raised in this uh, community in the town of Campton. My children attended Campton Elementary School, and they were well served by that education. They've gone on and done very well at the uh, at the graduate level, and um, you know they had a very good foundation. Uh, I feel very fortunate to have spent so many years in in this community. Um, I got involved in this uh, whole venture of uh, of uh, politics uh, uh, just on a, a friend's whim. Uh, the, Democratic Party was looking for a candidate and they couldn't find anyone and someone suggested me and I threw my hat in the ring and it's been exciting and rewarding ever since. Um, I've learned a lot um, by, from my experience in, in Concord. I've learned a lot about our state. I've learned a lot about the gov process of government. I've learned a lot about myself. And I think that I've bring some qualities that I think will serve the town of Campton and the state of New Hampshire well. And I would like the opportunity to continue doing that. <clears throat> Thank you, Jim. Uh, Eric, would you? Would you sure. My name is Eric Johnson. Um, 
I, uh, I'm running for uh, Captain State Rep, and uh, I tell you a little bit about myself. I moved here with my wife Debbie and three kids from Alaska uh, in the spring of 1999. We could have moved to Vermont, we could have moved to Maine, but we chose New Hampshire. And I gotta tell you, one of the really the large reason why we chose New Hampshire is its motto live free or die. It's a fantastic motto, and I took it to heart. Over the course of the last, I don't know, number of years, I've noticed an increasing encroachment of government into our lives as, you know, as a people. I think that's inappropriate and I like to do what I can to push back on that. So I have a few goals and a few um, principles that I would take to conquer. Uh, one of the goals is to keep a sales tax or income tax out. It would, I feel that it would, no actually I don't feel, I know that it would be a drag on our economy to to uh, impose that on us. I'm a big supporter of the Second Amendment, um, our constitutional right to keep and bear arms cannot be infringed. It's hugely important and I would do everything I could to defend that constitutional right. As I spoke earlier, um, government reach has become too much. Um, I believe that when you have a large government individual people become small and we lose our freedoms. You have a small government, people become big and we have more freedom. So, I'm into freedom and I want a small government. Reason why, what the way government becomes big and intrusive is when they put burdensome laws and regulations on, on the people. Okay, got it. Um, I want to reduce those burdensome laws and regulations. Uh, I want to go to Concord and help Concord get a reasonable, small budget and hold them to it. We have to live within a budget, so should they. I'm in favor of educational opportunities for kids. Parents know what they're, what's best for their kids, and they want what's best for their kids, and they should be able to have those educational opportunities, whatever they may be. As a society, we've become too dependent on the government to solve our problems. We look to the government for our needs and our desires. I think we should step back, rely on ourselves, and our family, friends, churches, community. That's where it should start. So, that's, those are principles I would take to Concord, and um, I appreciate the moment to talk, even though my voice is shaking. <laughs> All right, that's good. You're doing fine. Thanks, Eric. And Chuck Downing, please. Thank you. Thank you for hosting this event. Uh, I am Chuck Townsend, and I have been in the House for three terms now. I am running for another term to represent Wentworth, Dorchester, and Canaan. I've lived in Canaan for, since 1970, and I started off as a teacher in Canaan. And uh, as a teacher, I, I really learned the value of education, the value of helping kids to make their own decisions, to, to think for themselves. It really is an important thing, I think, in our democracy for us to have young people and adults who are able to make their own decisions. I think I agree with Eric Johnson that we thrive when we are able to make our own decisions, we are able to take responsibility for our own lives. I do think that there are many people who do not have the same opportunities as others. It's the government's responsibility as well as other areas to help people have the same opportunities and education is a key to doing that. In, in education you learn to make decisions which are good for you, for your families and for your businesses that you're working on. Our businesses need well-educated people in order to, to thrive in our economy and, and we need to change uh, our our environment so that our young people stay in the country and in, in the local communities. One of the real difficulties we have and our businesses have is that so many of the better educated young people move out of their community, their local community, move to the big city, are attracted to Boston and so on. I was thrilled when I was appointed to a science, technology and energy committee because I was a science teacher when I was teaching and 
I was a conservationist, and uh, so I have worked on science, technology, and energy, and I sponsored a bill uh, for bearing <coughs> the the uh, the uh, electric power lines, and unfortunately, we were not able to get it through. We need to be reelected in order to keep on moving ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, Chuck. Now, uh, each of you will have one minute to rebut or expand, depending upon, mm -hmm. uh, or both. Please go ahead, Jim. Okay. Um, first of all, let me say, Eric is a good person. No, he is. He's a good husband. He's a good father. He's, he's an incredible craftsman. He's an incredible craftsman. If you ever need furniture, this is the guy to go see. He's, he, he does beautiful things. But I have to disagree with him about some things. Um, we talked about freedom and keeping government out of your business. Yet the New Hampshire Republican Party has placed into their um, plank, into their platform, a plank declaring that um, uh, personhood is the, is the status. This basically says that uh, life begins at conception, which in effect would end all abortions, all abortions, regardless of the, the risk that the mother might be taking, regardless of any circumstances, it would basically end abortion in this state. It might even uh, uh, end the choice of some forms of birth control uh, that are popular in our society today. That's not keeping government out of your business. That's allowing government into some of the most intimate, difficult choices that any family, that any woman would ever have to make. And I see that as, as just totally contrary to the concept of live free or die. If you're going to live free or die, then you don't set limits on it. The other thing that the um, New Hampshire uh, Republicans decided was to state that um, marriage is between a man and a woman, one man and one woman, which again would take rights away from a significant number of New Hampshire citizens. Time and time. I can't support that. Thank you, Jim. Eric? Well, I suppose that if we agreed, I wouldn't be running. <laughs> so, <laughs> True. Um, wow, abortion. Wow. Okay. Um, If life does not happen at conception, when does it happen? From the moment of, of conception to the moment of birth, it's all a gradual experience. Nothing change, nothing different happens other than a gradual change. So if it's not a person at 13 weeks, but at 13 weeks and one day it is a person, what happened? So that's where we stand. That's where we stand different. Somewhere, life becomes life. I believe life happens at conception. Pretty simple. And yes, it does make the abortion argument pretty difficult if a life happens at conception. Thank you. Okay, Eric, thank you. And Chuck? Thank you. Uh, I appreciate Jim bringing up those, those both the women's health care issues and... and uh, I, I think that that we uh, we need to look more broadly than just within ourselves in order to make good decisions. We look to our families, we look to our neighbors and our communities. I think it is also wise, it is good policy for us to look to our city, our county, and our state government to help us in making decisions. Decisions like citing wind generation are not just something that one can do as an individual or even as a community. It's things like time, burying uh, other things. There's a good place for uh, I think state government as well as for individuals in making decisions. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen, and uh, good luck in your in your endeavors. Thank you. Uh, political endeavors and life endeavors. Um, and thank you very much to the viewing public for joining us here tonight at uh, 
from a uh, paper pending paper TV. Thank you very much to Juliet Harvey. There are our grassroots democracy of proceedings here to, uh, to allow our potential candidates to express themselves. I hope you guys have had an interesting time listening and uh, hope you'll be sure to come out and vote. It's very, very important. Uh,